another beautiful, beautiful day. It's, um, it's warm and sunny outside. It's a great day to get together. Thank you for joining us today. And welcome to the apartments at 165 Winter. 12 new units of affordable housing, 25% of which are for very low income households with the balance providing housing for middle income residents. I am Lisa Alberghini, President of the Planning Office for Urban Affairs. We are a social justice ministry of the Archdiocese of Boston, which does the work of the church by developing permanent affordable housing where all people can live with dignity and respect in homes they can afford. We are so excited to be here today for many, many reasons. The first and most importantly, we're excited because this new housing provides safe and quality homes for many people who are badly in need of decent housing that they can afford. Next, this is exciting because we've been able to creatively reuse this building, which was previ previously a school, I think as everyone here knows, owned by the city, and then convert it into housing to continue serving this community as it did so well for decades as a school. This is also an exciting development because it supports growth and investment in the adjacent downtown area, which is a major objective, we all know, of the city and of the Commonwealth. It's exciting because we've been able to get this property listed on the National Register for Historic Places. I don't know if you know that. Um, it's, we're in the process of doing that now. And we're having that done for its contribution to educating Haverhill's workforce. That also helped us with the financing. This conversion, um, for those of you who may not know this, was completed in accordance with the Secretary of Interior Standards for Historic Preservation. And we were able to save a number of the features of the, the wonderful structure, including some of the elaborate doors. When you take a tour, you'll see this inside. And my favorite, the blackboards from the school. Um, so every unit has a blackboard. Most of them are the original. And, and that means that you can write your grocery list where the kids used to do math, right? So <laughs> finally, this project is exciting because it is our third development in Haverhill, following on the Hayes at Railroad Square, 57 units of affordable and mixed income housing that we completed five years ago, and of course, Harbor Place, a fabulous development that will transform the downtown with 80 units of mixed income housing and a very significant commercial building that I think you all know is literally rising up from the ground, out of the ground as we speak with steel now at the fifth floor. Harbor Place will include 50 units of affordable housing and 30 market rate units. I can't possibly stand up here today without acknowledging our terrific partners on Harbor Place, Ron Trombley and Sally O'Rourke and the entire... <laughs> and the entire board of the Greater Haverhill Foundation, or without thanking Representative Brian Dempsey, who unfortunately couldn't be with us today, and of course, Maya Fiorentini, for their incredible commitment to that important project. So for all those reasons, we are excited and grateful to be here today. That's the good news. The less good news, the stunning news actually, is that we received 400 applications for these 12 units before we had to stop accepting them, showing an astonishing need for more affordable housing in this region. We would have to build 33 properties of this size to even begin to address that need, which is completely mind boggling. So today is both wonderful and sobering, and it tells us that we need to keep working and remain focused on our goal of providing for all of those in need. In Massachusetts, a person making $9 an hour, the minimum wage in this state, has to work 110 hours a week to afford an average two-bedroom apartment. That's almost three, time, three full-time jobs just to afford rent, not including food or any other basic need. That's why we received such an overwhelming number of applications for the apartments at 165 Winter Street, and that's why this is so important. Our residents here have come from shelters and from overcrowded or substandard housing in Haverhill and in the surrounding area. They work for a variety of employers, and we must always remember that the local workforce is the driving force behind Haverhill's economic success, and we need to provide for them in order to keep this city vibrant. Cardinal O'Malley, 
provides inspiration for our work to develop affordable housing. He knows the effect of homelessness and the lack of affordable housing on individuals, on families, and on entire communities. And he has continued the archdiocesan commitment to housing the poor by supporting the work of our office. As I'm sure you know, Cardinal Sean accompanied Pope Francis during his trip to the United States last month, or maybe now two months ago, because we're in November. <laughs> it was a moving visit filled with joyful and poignant moments and with many important lessons and messages. One of those messages relates directly to why we are here today. Just after his historic address to Congress, Pope Francis declined an invitation to dine with politicians because he had a previous engagement to share lunch with 300 homeless people at a Catholic Charities program in Washington, DC. During that visit, the Pope said, I want to be very clear. We can find no social or moral justification, no justification whatsoever for lack of housing. I watched a video of that, last, that lunch last night when I was preparing my remarks. And the most striking thing was that the Pope was smiling from ear to ear. Um, he was so happy to be there among the homeless. Cardinal Sean shares with Pope Francis great concern for the poor. They both advocate for love, compassion, social justice, and restoring the dignity of all people. Their message is a simple one. Care for each other, serve one another, especially the most vulnerable among us. For his selfish leadership and his unwavering commitment to housing justice, please join me in thanking and welcoming Cardinal Sean O'Malley. Thank you so much, Lisa, and thank all of you for being here today, your presence here is very important because it celebrates the success of this project and also, as Lisa has reminded us, underscores the importance of this kind of activity that needs to be supported. We are very proud of Lisa and the wonderful team uh, working at the Archdiocese's Office for Urban Planning. We're grateful to all of their partners, both the public and the private se sector, who make this kind of a project possible. The Holy Father, in all of his uh, teachings, reminds us that you know, we have a responsibility. We are here to take care of one another. And certainly one of the greatest human needs that people have is to have a decent place to live. And so. We are delighted that so many are here to share in the joy of this occasion and also to continue to hold up the importance of this kind of activity in our community. And now let us bless this new structure. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, by your life with Mary and Joseph, you sanctified the life of a home Dwell with us in our homes so that we may have you as our guest and honor you as our head. You taught your followers to build their houses upon solid rock. Grant that all of us may hold fast to your teaching and free from all discord serve you with our whole heart. You had no place to lay your head. But in uncomplaining poverty, you accepted the hospitality of your friends. Grant that through our help, people who are homeless may obtain decent housing. Lord, be close to the families who will live in this new housing. Be their shelter when they are at home, their companion when they are away, and their welcome guest when they return and at last receive them into the dwelling place you have prepared for them in your Father's house, where you live forever and ever. And may the peace of Christ rule in our hearts, and may the word of Christ in all its richness dwell in us, so that whatever we do in word and in work, we will do in the name of the Lord. Amen. I'd now like to thank and introduce Mayor James Fiorentini. I've done a lot of work with Mayor Fiorentini. 
And I've said many times that he has created an environment in Haverhill that welcomes development. Um, you, a lot of you probably don't know how just, just how unusual that is. Residents of Haverhill are, right, Crystal? I hear you chuckling over there. <laughs> it's unusual to be welcomed sometimes when we're, when we're doing this work. Residents of Haverhill are very fortunate because he knows that development helps this city and the people in it. Here at 165 Winter Street, he asked if we were interested in bidding on and purchasing, redeveloping the surplus, surplus school for affordable housing because he knows the need for that is so great. And when we decided to submit a proposal and were selected, he worked consistently with us to make sure that it happened, as he did on the Hayes and has been doing on Harbor Place. I want to thank you, Mayor, for your help, your support, your commitment, your vote of confidence in this, our third development in the city. And I also want to thank you for the $60,000 in city home funds that you provided here and for supporting our request for um, funds from the North Shore Home Consortium as well. The proactive work of the mayor and the city council in housing and economic development has been apparent throughout the city. And the apartments at 165 Winter are one more example of that. As usual, the city department heads have again provided us with thoughtful, thoughtful input, guidance, and help. And we're also grateful for that. I particularly would like to thank Bill Pillsbury. I know he couldn't be here today. Andrew Herlihy, Building Commissioner Richard Osborne, City Solicitor Bill Cox. I did see Bill Cox here somewhere. Bill, thank you. Um, Police Chief Alan DeNaro and all of the department heads and the city staff who helped us get here and also helped us on our other projects in Haverhill. With the leadership, encouragement, and direction of Mayor Fiorentini and his team, we've been able to complete 165 Winter Street. Please join me in thanking and welcoming Mayor Fiorentini. Thank you very much uh, for those kind words. It's, it's a great honor to be here. And uh, I've had some tough acts to follow in the past, but following the Cardinal, <laughs> I won't even try. <laughs> today is about a few things. Uh, today is first of all and foremost about compassion. Compassion for those who are in need of a home. And uh, we were very, very glad to be partners on this project, to put the property up for bid, and then to sell it uh, to uh, uh, the Planning Office of Urban Affairs. Cardinal, thank you very much for your leadership on this. You and Pope Francis and the parish priest here, the pastor of this parish, uh, Father Murray, uh, make me proud to be a Catholic. And I want to thank you very, very much for your leadership and compassion. So today's about compassion. Today's also about teamwork. It took a tremendous team to make this project and some of the other projects happen. When the Planning Office of Urban Affairs was done with the Hayes Building, we said to them, we've had a great experience working with you, and I hope you have with us. We've made permitting easy, and we want you to come back and work in the city again. And they did, and they've been great partners. But the Mayor's Office and Planning Office of Urban Affairs can't do it alone. We require a city council that's dedicated to growth and dedicated to making things happen in the city, and we've had that in this in this council. I think somebody else is going to introduce the councilors, but in case they don't, let me ask all the councilors who are here. We also have former councilor Mike Hart here. We have councilor Colin LePage, councilor Bill Hart, councilor Tom Sullivan, councilor Mike McGonigal's hiding here somewhere. And please give them a round of applause because they've stood with us every time. Today is also about preservation, and I wish my aunt could be here. My aunt, Roseanne Scamperino McKee, taught in this building uh, for decades. We always loved it. I would uh, come to visit her. And the Planning Office of Urban Affairs, as all of you are going to see, has done an absolutely fantastic job in preserving this, and I particularly love the blackboards. And finally, today is about looking to the future. Lisa's remarks underscored that we have to do more uh, for the people in this neighborhood. This school has always served the neighborhood and it serves the neighborhood again today, but we need to do more to provide housing and opportunity and jobs for people who live in this neighborhood and some of the other neighborhoods in our city. Thank you all for coming. It's my great honor to be part of this project. It couldn't happen without all the people here. Thank you. Unfortunately, Representative Brian Dempsey is unable to join us today. It's because he's in a meeting with the governor, which we thought was a reasonable excuse um, for not uh, being able to come here and for missing this. But he has played such a major role in all of our work in this city that I want to acknowledge his great support, even though he couldn't be here. Representative Dempsey's work in the legislature helped create the housing bond funds that provided $740,000 for 165 Winter Street, and he passed the state historic tax credit that enabled us to raise another $700,000 in equity. 
totaling over 1.4 million that he had a direct role in providing to this project. At the Hayes, his work resulted in even greater state support and tax credit equity. And at Harbor Place, um, he has helped us get over $30 million in a variety of state funding, quite an extraordinary commitment to that project into this city. We can't thank him enough for his significant role in all of our projects. And again, though Representative Dempsey, Dempsey couldn't be with us today, his chief of staff, Colleen McGonigal, is here to represent him. Colleen is amazing. She works incredibly hard. She's incredibly committed. And she makes much of this work happen behind the scenes. Thank you so much, Colleen. And please come forward to accept a gift from the Cardinal. Please. I know I don't think um, Congresswoman Songas is here today or Senator Ives, but I wanted to thank them. And I think we also have, again, um, the mayor did, he sort of beat me to it. He did mention the city councilors. But if you could all stand, the city councilors who are here, that would be great. So we can give you a round of applause again. <laughs> now I have the pleasure of introducing Crystal Cornegay, Undersecretary for Housing and Community Development in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, who is representing Governor Baker here today. The Governor and Secretary Jay Ash are very strong supporters of affordable housing and economic growth, and that is why they appointed Crystal as Undersecretary. Undersecretary Cornegay is a friend of people in need and of communities working to provide for their residents. She has done this work herself, on the ground, in the trenches, for the years that it can take to get these deals done when she was executive director of the Urban Edge Housing Corporation before becoming undersecretary. That makes her very special in this role. She is uniquely qualified and uniquely sensitive to the need for this housing, and she is unusually committed. For this development, Crystal's Department of Housing and Community Development provided an allocation of federal low-income housing tax credits that enabled us to raise over $2 million in equity, plus $428,000 in federal home funds, plus 600,000 in affordable housing trust funds and 140,000 in housing stabilization funds, all that came from the legislature through that bond bill that I mentioned earlier. So um, we've gotten a lot of money through a lot of programs and I want you to be very nice to Crystal, therefore. <laughs> her, her office allocates all of these scarce state and federal resources and we are delighted to have her here today at the first POU, POUA ribbon cutting that she has attended since joining um, Governor Baker's team. We are also so thankful for all of the staff at DHD who made this possible, especially Kate Racer and her entire team. Their work and service is outstanding. Thank you, those of you who are here from DHCD today. Crystal, thank you for taking on these challenges, for your deep commitment, and for being with us here today on behalf of the governor. Please welcome and thank Under Secretary Crystal Cornegay. Good afternoon, and uh, thank you for having me here. Um, I want to first say that um, what most people don't know is um, Lisa Alberghini was my first boss here. And so um, when I went to school to learn about community development, particularly affordable housing development, I interned for Lisa and then actually worked for her. And so she knows that I know because she taught me. <laughs> um, and so really um, appreciate not just her commitment, but what that experience brings to doing deals like this. Um, as Lisa alluded to, the Baker administration is very, very, very committed to Haverhill, not just because of its citizenry, not just because of the beautiful scenery, but because of the leadership here and the way that they work together and to build a Haverhill that is welcoming for all folks. We are seeing more and more across the Commonwealth, not just um, the traditional folks who are those in need, but there, as housing prices continue to rise, there are more and more people who are working every day who are having a much more difficult time. And so one of the special things about this deal and the other projects that the planning office has, is doing in Haverhill and partnering with, with the mayor and the counselor and their staffs is that there's also a, a 
room in here for what we call a market rate because there are lots of folks who work every day who are being squeezed out of the market. It's no longer just the folks that we think of as traditional affordable housing folks. So um, happy to do these deals, love the fun, but the main reason I do these projects is for Nicole. And I know what it takes. I'm a single mom. I know what it takes to have to raise your family and have to worry about every day the simple things, right? Like who's doing the homework and how do we get home and blah, 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 and mommy, 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 and how to be responsive. And I want to be part of a society and a commonwealth and a community that makes sure there's a place for, for Nicole and her daughter to grow up and wrestle with the things that they're going to have to wrestle with no matter where they grow up. So thank you, Nicole, for keeping us honest and making sure that um, we're always thinking about you. Thank you, Joan Lynn, for the work that you've done at DHCD. All this stuff that Lisa talked about happened before I got there, so I just get to show up. <laughs> um, and I want to thank the other partners that help us do these deals, um, Mass Housing, who will talk later. I see MHP in the room as well. And so thank you to all of our partners. And thank you to Mayor and the counselors. and. I I'm sure that this will be uh, one of many projects that we'll be doing together. Thank you, Crystal. I wasn't going to tell people that you, that I was your first boss, but <laughs> I, I don't know if that's aging me or something about that. But I don't, I don't, I don't know. But that's a good chance, right? Right. right. Oh, um, Bank of America has been an unusually strong partner of our office for many years on many developments and played a prominent role in the Hayes at Railroad Square. Um, before this development, and we just closed on our Harbor Place financing with Bank of America. Yay! <laughs> Could not get through today without saying that. Um, and here at the apartments at 165 Winter, they are helping yet again. Uh, we are so pleased to have Dory Conlin, Senior Vice President, representing the bank here today. Dory and her staff provided funding for countless, countless POUA developments, <laughs> focusing on the strengths of each one of our deals and always responding with support and enthusiasm to our projects. Our office has been blessed by the work of Maria Berry, Dory, Trish uh, Marinelli, and Michael Clark. I don't think Trish and Michael could make it here today. Um, and at the apartments at 165 Winter, the bank provided construction financing and yet again bought our tax credits. And I was trying to think about what the total investment was, Dory, and it's a lot. And I don't have that off the top of my head, but they both provided construction financing and have bought our tax credits as well. Um, most importantly, with the, um, our partnership with the bank has resulted in high quality homes for thousands of families and individuals. And we want to thank you, Dory, for that very unusual commitment. Please welcome. Dory Conlin from the Bank of America. I appreciate being here. I appreciate being here in Haverhill again. Uh, this is our third time, I think, um, um, ribbon cutting or groundbreaking here. And it's a wonderful city. Um, we've made a lot of friends here. And we certainly appreciate the fact that uh, we're able to be a small part of this uh, development here and uh, con continue to work with Lisa and Bill and Dave um, because it's, uh, it's great work. And uh, I don't think there's a better job in the bank. So thank you very much. Our final funder for the day here with us today is Tom Gleason, Executive Director of Mass Housing. Um, I was at an event with Tom also um, last Thursday, so he's going to get tired of hearing me say this. But Mass Housing is the state's affordable housing bank and has provided more than $18 billion, I always say billion with a B, um, in financing for homeowners and developers of affordable rental housing. Under Tom Gleason's leadership, Mass Housing has consistently maintained an extremely strong lending record in affordable housing, even when during the recession and, and when times were not as good. They have been active in almost every one of our projects in various forms and have never failed to support the work of our office, and for that I am most grateful. At the apartments at 165 Winter, Mass Housing administered the affordable housing trust funds, providing $600,000 to the project through DHCD also in the housing bond bill. Um, and Tom and his great staff of Lynn Shields, I think I, I think Jeff might have worked on this, um, have been a huge help. Um, nope, you're someone else has worked oh, on this here. Michelle. Oh, Michelle, yes. Thank you so much for all of your work and help. I also have the pleasure of serving with, serving with Tom on the Governor's Multifamily Advisory Committee, so I have seen, I've had the chance to see Tom's work up close 
and to see what he does to lead the agency. He is always evaluating Mass Housing's effectiveness and innovating to improve it. Thank you, Tom, for all of your help and support. Please join me in thanking and welcoming Tom Gleason. Thank you, Lisa. Good afternoon, everybody. Lisa, I, I, I'm not going to get tired of the introduction okay. because that means we're at another housing development and where more people are going to move in and be able to live in dignity, and that's really the only thing that matters, and that's what we're all about. Cardinal Sean, it's so great to be with you again uh, today. Mayor Fiorentini, it's been a few years, but we're back. Um, Lisa, your comments about housing and the number of people uh, that filled out an application were really sobering, and it really, it really struck home. But we can't, we can't forget what we're what we're doing this for and what we're doing it about. Affordable housing is happening all over the state. It's happening uh, in Haverhill today in in this development. Uh, but this isn't the last time anything ever gets done. It's just another in a continuation of events in housing that's getting built all across the state. Um, we do this work one building at a time, one apartment at a time, but most importantly, we do it for one family at a time so that they have a decent place to live where they can put down roots and raise their family and get a little piece of that American dream, and I think that's what makes it all worthwhile. To be able to do it with such a team that we have here uh, in Haverhill, with the mayor's leadership and Cardinal Sean, with your dedication and Lisa and you and your great team, as a public funder, and I think even as a private funder, it makes it easy for us to come to a community like this and a development like this, because we want to invest where people want to do affordable housing. And it's not like that all over the state, but it is like that here, and that's why we keep coming back again and again. We were with you uh, in the Court of End building. We were with you in the Hayes building. We're here today. Uh, these apartments and will be with your organization again in River Place. This is only our most recent commitment here. We've done 15 deals uh, with the planning office. So, Mr. Mayor, you know how to pick a good partner. Uh, we've done nearly 1,000 rental units here in Haverhill. We've helped 1,400 families buy their first home and put down roots here in this city. Uh, so, we're glad to be here and we'll be here again. Michelle Vinciguerre, I want to I want to thank you for all the work that you've put into this. I always leave off the people that do all the work where I get to stand up here and do all the talking. Michelle, thank you so much uh, for all your dedication and your work. So Lisa, let's move on to the next one. Let's get this done and we'll go to Harbor, Harbor Place. Um, there are just a couple of other funders I want to acknowledge today. Massachusetts Housing Partnership provided a $220,000 permanent mortgage. And is, Mal is Megan here today? Yep. Megan McCall Megan, yes, how are you? Um, Megan is um, wonderful. She always um, does this work with great cheerfulness, as I said last Thursday. And I'm wondering if you could just come up and accept a gift from the Cardinal, if you would. Thank you, Megan. I also want to point out that Councillor Bill Ryan just came, I think, and want to thank you as well. Thank you, Councillor, for your work and support. Um, we, <laughs> we, we also, um, I'd like to thank the Massachusetts Historical Commission and Secretary Galvin, who allocated the state historic tax credits, and to thank the North Shore Home Consortium for their money. I don't think Kevin Hurley um, was able to, or Karen Sawyer were able to join us here today. Now we have a very special guest on the program um, with Nicole Carter. Crystal made reference to her, one of our new residents, who's here to share a few words about her journey and how she came to live at the apartments at 165 Winter. Nicole has a special story, and we're so happy to have her and her family living here now. Nicole is courageous, deeply committed to her family above all else, and she has tremendous energy. Um, and there is so much that we can learn from her. Please welcome with me, Nicole Carter. Good afternoon. My name is Nicole Carter. Together with my husband, Greg, and our one-year-old daughter, Adriana, we're three very happy new residents of the apartments at 165 Winter Street. It all started about a year ago, October 16th to be exact. Adriana was just two days old when the two of us moved into a mass family shelter. Um, it's actually one street away. Every day I would walk by 165 Winter Street and watch the progress. I remember stopping and praying for an opportunity to live here. 
I answered a Craigslist ad for a two bedroom apartment. I quickly learned that the apartments would be available in the fall. I worked so hard to get all of my information into the management team. You see, if I worked hard to get all the information in, I would possibly be able to bring my family together. Greg, my husband, that's my husband, <laughs> wasn't able to stay with Adrian and me at the Mayus. He works the overnight shift in Boston from 7 to 7, and the shelter's rules and curfew of 9 didn't allow him to stay or even briefly visit us. I knew that if I made a goal to work hard, get a job, and stay on top of this opportunity, I would succeed. <clears throat> there was one small hiccup. On May 15th, I broke my wrist roller skating. I was going to need surgery in June. It sure was tough being in a full cast, walking up three flights of stairs at the shelter with my five-month-old daughter. I actually lived in this scatter site, the yellow building in this parking lot. And I lived at the very top with a five-month-old with one arm. And it wasn't easy. It still didn't hold me back from accomplishing my goal. In September of this year, I got a job at the local market basket. I worked there 25 hours a week. I love working there interacting with customers, building relationships, and getting to know people. My husband is happy too. He gets to come home to me in sunshine every day. There is no curfew and he can work hard and come home to enjoy the life we built. I would personally like to thank Cardinal Sean O'Malley. Thank you. <clears throat> and the developers of the apartments of Winter Street for building this community. I have a couple people that I like harassed for like all my paperwork. So it was Heather Phillips, I'll never forget that lady. Margie Adriana, thank you. Cause you gave me this opportunity. And sorry, the rest of the management team for having patience and answering all the questions regarding the problem. I would also like to thank my husband for sticking by my side through this whole experience, constantly giving me the, the support I need. We've been married seven months and I've never been happier. I call him Honey Bunny, so I love you, Honey Bunny. <laughs> me and my family are forever grateful for this opportunity. Thank you and God bless. It's always tough after these stories to um, say much of anything else, but as I mentioned, she's been very courageous during this whole journey. Um, I'd also like to acknowledge, just before we wrap up here, the team members. Actually, I think we also have a school committee member. Here's Joe here. Joe is somewhere, I thought. Maybe he has left. Um, but I want to acknowledge the team members, the architectural team, the architect on this, uh, Becky and Steve, were terrific. Yay. Thanks so much. Steve and Mike Bennett, you did make it. Thank you. Uh, Mike, who leads the, uh, the architectural team and has done great work for us on so many developments. Thank you. NEI General Contracting, I think Mark, Matt, and Lawrence are here. They were the ones who um, did the construction here, did a fabulous job on this renovation. Our attorneys, Nolan Sheehan and Patton from Boston, and also attorney Dick Sheehan from H Haverhill. I don't know if Dick made it here. Um, uh, Sammy Otis Consultants is part of our team. Andy Truman might be here. I don't know if Andy is still here. Yes, thanks, Andy. GZA, Geotechnical, Geoenvironmental, um, was that one of our consultants as well. Waypoint KLA, I think I saw Ray, Ray Matrano. I don't know if Gary's here, but thank you, Ray. There, Gary is too. Thanks, Gary. Peabody Properties, who's been incredible. Um, thank you for all of your help. I, we're here with um, Teresa, I think Louis, Adriana, and Karen Fishwill, um, the president of the company. Thank you so much, Karen, and Peabody Properties. Tremont Preservation, Leslie Donovan was our historic consultant. Um, so I want to thank all of those and any other team members I might have missed. We do have a thank you board around here somewhere, I think, listing everybody. Um, I'd also like to thank um, the members of our board. Uh, Kevin Tierney is here with us today. Thanks so much for joining us, Kevin. Appreciate your being here. And um, our caterer, Lisa, um, I think has been provided, is providing some great refreshments after the event. And I'd especially like to thank the PAOA staff, um, Dave Aiken and Bill Grogan, for all of their great work on this development. Um, and again, Lois, whom I don't get to acknowledge often, Lois Alexninis, who just 
did all of the planning for these two um, very high stress events. Um, and so I really want to thank the three of you particularly for all of your work on this. Finally, I'd like to introduce Father Robert Murray to lead us in a closing prayer. After that, what we'll do is that we're going to turn, go around the corner to the front of the building, and we have a big long ribbon that I actually am going to ask Nicole and her husband if they would mind holding up for us. Um, and then we're going, I'm going to ask the speakers um, to come and grab a pair of scissors so that we can cut that ribbon. So right when we're done with this, we'll just um, go around the corner to the front door. Father Mori, we want to thank you for your support and help throughout the planning and construction of these wonderful new apartments and for your leadership in this community. I know, um, and by the way, we were able to use the parking lot, which is a huge help when you have a tight site to be able to stage construction, and we really want to thank you for that. I know you're also working yourself along with the parish and others in the Merrimack Valley to help address the continuing need for more affordable housing, and we're very grateful for your efforts on that. We look forward to being your neighbor and to supporting you and your work to bring more attention to the need for more homes for people um, that people in this city can afford. So please come and accept a gift from the Cardinal and lead us in closing prayer. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, Cardinal Sean, Mayor Fiorentini. Uh, before I uh, offer the closing prayer, I'd just like to explain a little bit to some of my um, uh, parishioners who are here who don't speak English. Entonces, hermanos y hermanas, hemos oído durante esta hora pasada uh, muchas gracias a mucha gente que has, uh, ha sido involucrado en este proyecto. Y yo sé, ayer, yo durante la misa uh, uh, dije a ustedes que uh, señor, uh, señora Albergini me invitó a, a hablar un poquito y también para invitar a uh, la gente de la uh, consejeros pastoral y consejeros financieros, pero yo no hice esto. No, no hice, no hice esto. Entonces, yo decidí para invitar a ustedes que fue uh, parte de la gente que fue, uh, hicieron aplicaciones, pero no, uh, no podía uh, uh, recibir un apartamento en este proyecto. Yo quería mostrar a la gente aquí, uh, hacerles un poquito incómodo, no tanto, porque todavía necesitamos hablar, uh, trabajar con ellos en este proyecto grande, pero en otro lado, yo quería simplemente dar una, una cara a este problema en este área. Entonces, uh, ahora, ahora, ahora voy a uh, traducir en inglés que yo estoy diciendo ahora por, por, para ellos. <clears throat> so, what I just said to them, uh, folks, was that I was grateful for Lisa to ask me to say this prayer on, on Friday when we were talking. She said to me, if you'd like to make a comment or two, that'd be great. And so, and then she asked me to invite the members of the parish council and the parish finance council to be here with us. I didn't do that. Lo siento. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> <laughs> who I invited were the people that I know who made applications, and some of them are standing and some of them are sitting among you, who made applications who were part of the 400, who did not receive uh, uh, the opportunity to come and be here. I wanted you to be among them. I want you to be a little uncomfortable. And I hope that uh, this uh, discomfort uh, continues to spur you on to uh, continue this work, the, so the, the, the social justice work of the church in providing affordable housing, a decent place to live for all peoples. Yo, como dije, yo quiero que ellos, tan, otra vez, hermanos y hermanas, sienten un poquito incómodo, pero otra vez no tanto, porque todavía necesitamos ellos para trabajar con nosotros en este proyecto de justicia, justicia social para obtener por toda la gente, por todos de nosotros, a casas y apartamentos que podemos afudar y, tam y también en que podemos vivir en seguridad y con alegría y, uh, y en una manera en que el resto de, de la gente vive y también para uh, realizar por nosotros, por todos, uh, el sueño americano. Y gracias. Ahora vamos a orar. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we give you gifts, we give you thanks for all the great things that you give to us, our lives, our faith, our desire to know you and serve you, and to serve you in the other. We give you thanks for this great project and all those who are involved in it. We ask you to continue to open our hearts and minds to all those who come before us, particularly those who are most needy, particularly those who are most vulnerable. We ask your blessings upon us this day, upon, uh, upon all of our residents, our new neighbors, and we ask that you continue to keep us in your love through Christ our Lord. <laughs> Dios 
en el cielo. Te damos gracias por los dones que nos ha dado en nuestras vidas. Te damos gracias por ese proyecto hoy y eh, la manera en que ha sido completado con este éxito. Por favor, da su bendición sobre nuestros vecinos nuevos y sobre también la gente que está, uh, estuvieron involucrado en traer este proyecto a su éxito. Por favor, continúa a hacernos uh, y cuidar nuestras mentes la gente que no tiene casas o tiene más vulnerable entre nosotros. Te lo pedimos por esto, por, por, te lo pedimos esto por Jesucristo nuestro, Señor. Amén. Y que Dios les bendiga en el nombre del Padre, del Hijo y del Espíritu Santo. Amén. Thank you, everybody. Gracias a todos. Okay. Here we go. Everybody ready? One, two, three.